As 2019 comes to a close, we can look back on a wild year. The trade deal was front and center in the news media, another year has passed, and still no actual deal. Though we're told that there's one in the works. They promised this time. This was a record year for central bank stimulus in terms of how many central banks were cutting interest rates and printing money in a so-called boom time. Very unusual. Even the central bank of the Netherlands has come out and admitted what we've known all along. Never trust the money printers. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at several factors. I want to talk about what's happening with the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve. I want to look at what they have done in relation to the stock market. We are going to look at what Deutsche Bank's report had said. The Central Bank of the Netherlands also had their own report. We're going to look at economic data as well. A lot to cover. Let's get into it right away. All right, I just wanted to start with the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. You can see it here on this page. We had quite a long period of time where the Fed basically did not change their balance sheet. They kept it roughly at about $4.5 trillion. And this was going on for a little while. And then we had Janet Yellen suggesting that we're going to watch some paint dry. That was quantitative tightening. And they started to do this in a very methodical, very understood level. And the market didn't like it. We saw what happened in 2018 and then the Federal Reserve decided to increase their balance sheet approximately now almost halfway back to where they were before to that 4.5 trillion mark. It only will take a few weeks to get back to where they were. We all know what has happened in this period of time. Now the important point here is what is the effect on the stock market even though they claim that they're not buying the actual stocks themselves. If we look at their actual balance sheet if we see their books, we open them up as wide as they will go. They do not show any purchases of stocks. Yet when we look at the effect, it is completely correlated. I've shown you this time and time again. I'm going to give you some updated numbers and I'm also going to give you that perspective from somebody else. Take a look at this first, right from the Bank of Netherlands own website. Quantitative easing and exuberance in stock markets, evidence from the euro area. It says relatively new back in November 2019. And I wanted to read you this abstract because it just explains what I'm talking about here. In response to a prolonged period of low inflation, the ECB introduced quantitative easing in an attempt to steer inflation to its target close to 2%. We all know how that worked out. Not exactly what they intended. The paper examines whether QE contributes to exuberance in the euro area stock markets by using recent advances in bubble detection techniques. We do so by linking price developments in 10 euro area stock markets to a series of country specific macro fundamentals and QE. So all of that jargon, but ultimately here it is. The results indicate that periods of QE coincide with exuberant investor behavior even after controlling for improving macro fundamentals. So even if we factor in, you know, the economy is doing better, there's more jobs, there's more this and that, still, 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 there is exuberant investor behavior. And what I like to call risk on okay that's the name of the game right now risk is on the table the investors see this as a green light people take that and they go with it they buy hand over fist whatever they can get particularly right now technology this is going off the charts it does not matter anymore what the pe ratios are what the market cap is when you look at different indicators none of this is being addressed any longer unless it fits their criteria. Otherwise, it simply is a non-issue. Printing money equals I'm going to buy stocks. And that's what so many people have done. And obviously, it has looked very, very good for them over this insane so-called bull market. Here's a chart I've shown you a few times before looking at the weekly change in the S&P 500 compared with the weekly change in the Fed balance sheet and you could see that correlation. It is very clear to me. I know it is to you. The general direction is there through some variances along the way but there, this is it. I mean we, we can see that time and time again the Federal Reserve is printing money and of course it has a direct correlation, a direct impact on the stock market and there's no way to deny this. I mean I can't believe 
even when you're watching CNBC and Bloomberg and all of this, they're looking at all the nonsense. And meanwhile, this is really the only chart they need to be showing. However, it makes their entire industry look like a fraud. It makes it look like it's a game, a casino. But this is what they have to do. They have to keep it under wraps and they have to tell everybody that things are okay, that the Federal Reserve is there doing their thing. It's temporary. They're going to do this only to support the markets. They're going to pull out. Don't worry. You don't have to worry about any inflation because the PCE rate is at 1.6%. You don't have to worry about your food rising. Just ignore it because apparently it's really volatile. This is the type of behavior that people are used to. And for the most part, if you ask around in the financial industry, everything's fine. Just ask around and they will tell you there's no reason to have any concern whatsoever. Now, this comes out of a report directly from Deutsche Bank. I'm going to show you two pieces of information. QE4. So right here, they're actually putting it on paper in their reports, calling this QE4. They're not beating around the bush. They're calling it what it is. Weekly changes in the Fed balance sheet versus weekly changes in the S&P 500. So now even Deutsche Bank is using the same type of information, showing you that correlation. And without getting into all of the jargon that's on this page, you could see it for yourself. They are linked. They are connected. At the bottom, we have the weekly percentage change in the Fed balance sheet. And then on the y-axis, we have the weekly percentage change in the S&P 500. And that just shows you, yes, there are variances, of course, but ultimately they print money, stock market rises. Check this out. Since QE4 started in October, a 1% increase in the Fed balance sheet has been associated with a 1% increase in the S&P 500. This is consistent with this report, which is what I showed you a moment ago from the DNB, which finds that QE boosts stock markets even when controlling for improving macro fundamentals. This is a problem, not because it's the Federal Reserve doing it, not because it might be the ECB doing it or the BOJ, it's because it has broken the market. And that will ultimately lead to a bubble somewhere. Many people have been pointing to the corporate debt market. It has looked terrible. I'm going to show you some data on that, of course. But you cannot persist. Many people believe that this bull market will never end. And I actually feel a sense of pity for these people here because I know they're just going all in. They're putting everything they can into it. I've been told the market will never go down again. Never. It's never going to happen anymore. I've seen other people that will limit themselves to 40%. The market might come down 30 to 40%. So nobody ever wants to acknowledge any more than that. I've noticed it's quite sad and, and an embarrassment. But uh, this is what, what happens time and time again. We see the euphoria. We see people that are so optimistic. There is a 0% chance of any of that changing. If you go back into 2018 or even 2017, let's say, you would have nearly 100% optimism optimism with investors. Come the end of 2018, fourth quarter, nobody was optimistic. Everybody was pessimistic. And you even had Jim Cramer saying, buy gold. That's how intense things became. They were interviewing the people. If you notice what happens during these tough times, you have the interviews on these different channels. They change. They start bringing in people that tell you, okay, well, maybe you need to buy some gold. Maybe you need to do this or that. And then when times are good, Good, they actually sit there in a round table and laugh at people who think that what's happening in front of our face is a fraud. It's it's just silly to see it all, but even apparently grown up people, they believe it. Northman Trader put this on his Twitter and I wanted to show you it. I'll, I'll zoom in. There's two points that I wanted to make. You do realize that the entire gain above the September 2018 highs was Fed driven, 100% of it. And it was not until they blasted the balance sheet that the gains stuck. Before that, stocks had gone nowhere. 2019 remains a Fed liquidity operation, full stop nothing organic. You remember the organic growth of the balance sheet? One of the stupidest things I have ever read in any sense whatsoever in the financial world. It was ridiculous to see it. I mean, I'm still cheerful about it. It's so crazy. But looking at this here, if you remember, we were covering this all throughout the entire time. The market, the S&P 500 specifically, was having such a hard time to give in around that, let's say, 2800 mark. And even the 3000 mark, it was just struggling up and down, up and down, up and down. And then finally, they put into place QE4 
more and that's when it took off. Is that a coincidence? Of course not. People need to get wise with this. They need to realize what this is all about. If you admit it, okay, that's one thing. You acknowledge it, but you're simply saying, look, I don't want to be left behind. I'm going to put my money in. I understand, okay? But when you see this, you have to know what's going on behind the scenes and that's my job. All right, now quickly here, you could see what he had to say as well. You know, I've been on this all year. Others see it as well. We all see it, yet the Fed keeps hiding in silence, refusing to acknowledge their role. And he actually quoted the same Deutsche Bank report that I just showed you. They have a clear impact on the stock market. And I just wish that there was an acknowledgement on their part. But of course, I don't think we're going to get that. Now, if you look at this, we are seeing the two and the 10 year. If you remember that brief moment with the yield curve inversion has really come around. It has steepened and it is going back up as we move closer and closer towards what many people believe is late cycle. This is one of those key indicators. Time and time again, this shows up. It doesn't matter which one you use. There are so many different yield curve inversions, 10 year, three month. It doesn't matter. They're all basically doing the same thing right now, all tracking the same pattern we've seen historically time and time again with 100% accuracy. I wanted to show you some economic indicators as well, including this one. Dallas Fed manufacturing outlook looks very bad throughout 2019, similar to what we saw back in 2015, 2016. This is coming at a time, of course, when we're being told that everything's okay. So it seems really strange to see all this data piling up. And you could see this one, the Chicago business barometer looking very weak from the time they brought in the QE4 and everything along with that. Seems rather strange to see this data the way it's presented. And then something I've shown you before but piling up all of them into the one chart, whether that's from the Philadelphia Fed, U.S. Empire State Manufacturing Survey, the, from Richmond Manufacturing Survey, Kansas City, Dallas, and so on. All of that together looks extremely weak on average. There are variances, obviously, with any piece of information like this, you're going to see that, but the trend is definitely down and it's been heading there since the beginning of 2018. I wanted to give you an update on, on the uh, negative yielding debt. While it is still excessive, while the fact that it even exists is ridiculous, right now it's actually at 11.6 trillion. This was at 17 trillion at its peak, and it has come down definitely to a great degree. There's no denying that. This is actually what we expected. As we see that risk on, then money is moving out of those negative yielding bonds and moving more into equities. I'll try to bring you some more data from the EPFR when I can dig it up and we can get some actual numbers behind that. But it's it's evident when you look at something like this. I'm actually surprised at the price of gold because we have seen the risk on mentality with the euphoria and still gold has maintained a price that is quite high compared to where it was just a little while ago. Meaningful growth in the BBB debt, corporate leverage close to record highs. There's a lot of information here. Essentially what we're looking at is companies that have taken excessive risk. They finance everything with debt. They're doing so. And why? Because the Federal Reserve and other central banks around the world have made it very easy. The risk taking is there and it's on all levels from the corporate side as well as the investor side. You can see the growth on the left hand chart. On the right hand chart is basically just showing you that 55% of the BBB BB debt would have a high yield rating based on leverage alone. The share of debt for highly leveraged BBBs, this gives you the total debt share of BBBs with a greater than four times gross leverage sitting at approximately 25%. This continues to grow and as the risk piles on, it's only going to get worse. That's not a good thing. Just wanted to mention really quickly, if you're not on the community or blog section of my channel, I posted this, but apparently the trade deal is going to be signed within a matter of days. Let's see if it actually happens. I did read reports that the actual full details will not be disclosed to the public and that the purchases of agriculture from China will be on a best efforts basis. I don't know what the hell they're talking about, but if this is the case, this is not a trade deal but that's it i'm gonna leave it at that because at this point it's all speculation i'll end the video there if you found it informative hit the thumbs up button when you do you're supporting me so i do appreciate it very much if you want to learn about passive income, building a business, online businesses, everything for free 100 for free all you got to do is go to the amazon gps.com
If you want to learn about the financial history, the asset classes, anything to do with self-sufficiency and reducing your expenses, and literally everything in between, I cover that in these two books. They fit into each other like a lock and key, so definitely check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. Have you seen this video yet? I broke down so many important points that actually connect with today's video. So I highly recommend checking it out. I'll put it right here. Click on it and I'll see you there.